Shalom Israel. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Akakwadash, for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And there's no God beside them. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Rakakwadash, the Holy Spirit, and Shalom to the elect. Today's lesson is going to go into um, an article I found on the people's, the people's Voice, as you see here, entitled Kamala Files to Seize Guns and Disarm Americans Within 100 Days Using execute Executive Action. Now, if she gets in, she's going to disarm the American people, right? Now it says, Kamala Harris has vowed to use executive action. Okay, we just read that. It's in, our, it's in the title. From the beginning, I have said my agenda includes attempting to get Congress to act. Harris said to a reporter at a campaign event in Georgia, Atlanta. But if they don't, within the first 100 days of my administration, I'm going to take executive action because we what we need is action. Gun violence and disarming Americans is shaping to be a core issue of the Harris campaign. Atlanta-based rapper and singer Quavo helped to introduce Harris at the walk at the rally and deliver a speech praising her for running the first ever White House Office of Gun Violence Prevention. You know? And um, you know, you you jigs, man. You jigs are lost in the sauce. Before it was niggas for Trump. Now I'm guessing it's niggas for K Kamala. Because she's so-called... Because she looks like a so-called uh, black woman. Right? And I was thinking about that um, earlier today. How people can identify... When it comes to your president... You can identify with this person because they look like you. But what about with the Lord? Why don't you identify with the Lord? Right, we constantly bring out hell. That's the first picture people see. Right, well, I know over here in a, in a New Jersey camp, the Great Millstone, New Jersey camp, we have, of course, the the board, you know, telling the tribes who they are, and then right beneath it, it shows uh, which Lord willing, I'll make a new banner on that, but it shows Caesar with uh horns on his head, and it literally says right next to it. Jesus is not black. I mean, Jesus is not white. He's black. Right? Which we know his name is Yahweh Shai. But for teaching purposes, you know, we put that on the, um, you know, on the banner. And then we put, uh, you know, different verses to prove our point. Yet people, and then sometimes people might ask, we'll show them, we'll show them a picture of how the Lord uh, is depicted according to Revelation 1 and 13. And they'll walk away and you know, uh, disassociate themselves from that teaching, right? So our people is all effed up, and the Lord is not within them. All right, I just thought uh, that was a you know a point through the spirit that I had thought of. Meanwhile, your choice, our people, their choices, all right, on their ruler is very. Uh, Is careless. As a matter of fact, you know, I did a lesson the other day going into First Samuel's eighth chapter, and Samuel broke down to our people when they was begging for a king so they can be like the other nations. However, this king would rule over them with vigor. To the end thereof, like it says in First Samuel's eight and eighteen, that they're gonna cry unto the Lord. And they said, Fuck it, we still want this man over us. And today, all this information is coming out. You even had this, uh, you know, um, the former judge, Joe Brown, you know, he was bringing it out, you know, on that uh, lady Kamala, which she's not even an African-American. 
He's actually a, a Elamite, a so-called East Indian. Yet, despite all those facts, our people still gonna go, you know, hell, they're gonna run to the polls to vote for her. And they might curse you out for not doing so. The Lord calls these people a sadist children. Let me grab that one. This is the book of um Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22 for my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. <laughs> you know, it seems like our people would rather choose that which they know nothing about and to stay in, in, in darkness, right? Than to uh, put their mind, you know, to understanding to understanding at least who you who you choosing to put over you right but hey i think it's also written of in jeremiah 3 this is a good one it says turn jeremiah 3 and 14 let me see Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 3. This is a good one going into the adulterous Israel. Let me start at the top, actually. Because this is a good one. They say if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith Yahweh. You know, and again, that's a spiritual thing, you know, to where, to an actual black man. And, of course, the Lord is not a black man. He's a so-called black man. He has darker skin. All right. He's an Israelite. All right, because black is a color, it's not a nationality. But for face face value, to a real, actual, so-called black man, you don't accept. You know? Like the Lord told, uh, I, I believe it was Ezekiel, he said, I have not sent thee to a people of a hard speech. For if I have, they will have listened. You know? In other words, he have not sent us into the other nations for the other nations would have listened to us more than our own people. Our own people will follow every other leader, every other God, but their own. All right? The God of Israel looks just like you. He has woolly hair. You know, he has dark skin. He's very charismatic. He's very, you know, he can be. I'm not going to say very funny, but he can be funny. You know? He looks just like you. And it's the spirit. I'm seeing this, this so-called end up, you know, walking down the street with, uh, you know, her uh, curls out. You know? He looks just like you, man. He's more of like a caramel complexion. But it says, Lift up thine eyes unto the high, high places and see where thou has not been lying with. And the ways has thou set for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. All right. And Cuevo, for those who don't know, is a so-called African-American rapper, you know, who um, I'm guessing he uh, 
hails from Atlanta. You know, that's what a lot of the so-called rappers are either Atlanta or Chicago, it seems. But it says, therefore, the showers have been withholding. So it says, in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore, the showers have been withholding, and there have been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. All right, and bad times are coming for you Israelites. Right, bad times are coming for you Israelites. Various precepts we could be here all day speaking on because you serve not the Lord, therefore, bad times are coming. Deuteronomy 32 comes to mind, right? Where it says how the Lord looked you out, yet you wax fat and pretty much shit on the Lord. All right. But you're going to find out the hard way who is your power, who is your help. All right. The scriptures speak on how you saw Edom, which rules Kamala Harris, which rules Donald Trump, which rules every president. These elites, which they know themselves to be Esau Edom. The scriptures say. How their words were smoother than butter, yet war was in their heart. This devil, Kamala, wants to take away your guns because when they come down having great wrath, they don't they want as little uh pushback as possible. Okay? And even I was watching the elder brother Mawatazak this morning. He was even saying how well he was going into this guy, he's a Green Beret, and the Green Beret. He's pretty much breaking down that within the next six months, there will be a civil war. And no matter who wins, all right, it's going to be nasty out here. All right, there will be riots because a lot of people is not going to accept the winner. And then those riots are going to bring counter, you know, or, or yeah, counter attacks from the other side. And it's going to get real nasty. And your your dumbass over here uh, advocating for uh, you know to take away the guns. You know, now I'm not Op opposition is that you need to fear your how about shimmy how shot. But since we know you're not going to do that, that's going to be your next best hope. All right, but our people is all messed up in the head. But it says um. Would thou not from this time cry unto me, my father, thou art the God of my youth. And like he said in the um, book of Isaiah, why should you be stricken anymore? You will only make your heart hit, you, you will only make your head harder and harder. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Has thou seen that which backsliding Israel have done? She has gone up upon high mountains and under every green tree, and there have played the harlot. And I said, After she had done all these things, turn thou unto me, but she returned not. And that's our message. Turn back to your how about you, I was shy, but you choose not to. All right? Your life in this world is way more important than turning back to your how about Shimi I was shot. So it says, But she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw, when for all the causes, and I saw, but for all the causes whereby blacks backsliding Israel committed adultery, I have put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah um, had not turned unto me with her whole heart, but faintly saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel have justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, 
and say, Return thou black backsliding Israel, saith Yahweh, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. So that takes humility. And as we're in a time of great pride, our people will not do so. These people will not do so. Because they're not Israelites at this point in time. Alright? Physically, yes, they're Israelites. But mentally, they are heathen. Alright? It's only a select few. Which, that's another topic for another time. But there's only select few. Alright? That will come out of that heathen mindset. I.e. the strangers. And it's written of in various precepts. 1 Peter, Isaiah 11. 1 Peter 1 and 1, James 1 and 1, to the strangers, all right, to the strangers, all right, of Israel that are scattered among the heathen. That's where that whole understanding of the Gentiles being able to be saved comes from. All right, it says in what? Ephesians 2 and 12, that I know that ye were Gentiles carried away into these dumb, these dumb idols. So if they were physically Gentiles, how could they stop being Gentiles? It's talking about you were Gentiles in a mind. All right. But it says only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy pot thy God or thy power either or which the Lord on caps is Yahweh. And has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice. Say if Yahweh. Where you might say, Well, when do we hear your voice? Well, the scriptures say that in Hebrews 1 and 1 that he spake in times past by the prophets. So the voice of the Lord comes through the prophets. It tells us in the book of Ezra, uh, I believe second Ezra, right? That for thy help he will send Jeremiah and Isaiah. Right? And really also. Well, all, all the prophets Alright And they're important In their appointed time Whatever captivity the Lord will put them in Alright They will be a reprover to the house of Israel Turn all backsliding Israel Save the Lord For I am married unto you And I will take you one of a city And two of a family And I will bring you to Zion And I will give you pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Okay? And we're going to feed you with knowledge and understanding how to get out of this place. All right? Whereas most will feed you with knowledge and understanding how to stay, the real pastors will feed you, all right, telling you what you did wrong and what you can do to fix it. Whereas we just read, turn. All right? Meaning change. Let's see that word for turn actually. So it says return, turn back. Hebrew word being shawab. Saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increase in the land in those days. Saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Right? And essentially, the, the bringing in of better days starts off, all right, with the teaching of this word. Right? This is written in the book of Psalms 119. How shall a man cleanse his way? By taking heed to every word of the Lord. We understand, you must understand that the word of the Lord is brought forth by the prophets. The Lord told Ezekiel to drop the word unto Israel. 
right? And all the prophets, essentially, whatever the Lord told the prophets, the prophets will relay the message to Israel. Okay? And, like we always say, if you don't believe us, just wait and see. You know, just, just give it a few months. You're going to be crying out, as you always do. <laughs> you know? Because as it's written, we are yet this day in our captivity. All right? And appointed, and appointed unto us under the curses for not following our Lord and Savior, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. It says, um... This is a good one. Deuteronomy 28, right? And I'm going to read 48. What's that? Just had it. It's locked. Yeah, it's Let's read 58, and then I'm going to jump down. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, Yahweh thy power. Right, jumping down to verse uh, 63. It shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiceth over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. All right, and again, this is for your disobedience. We just read in Jeremiah 3, right? That our people was constantly backsliding. You can read in the book of Judges how good times with fellas once we turn from our ways and follow the Lord. But as the uh, old saying goes, when I mean, the Apostle Hard did a lesson on it, uh, good times being weak men. And in Israel, you know, according to Israel, you know, good times bring forgiveness of rights of they bring forgiveness of the Lord. It says, it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoices over you to do you good and to multiply you, so Yahweh will rejoice over you to destroy you. Right? And to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. So, in this land, were you forever calling yourself black? Forever proud of being black, a Dominican, Mexican? Right? Therefore, you will forever meet the curses written up in Deuteronomy 28. See, according to Revelation 7, the Lord is saving the 12,000 of Israel. Right? Whose mind is according to this word. Did not the Lord say in Revelation 3, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which the Lord is coming to bring upon a disobedient all right yeah man so let's let's see if this uh what else that article had to say it says gun violence and disarming americans is shaping to be a core issue of the harris campaign atlanta-based rapper and singer quavo helped to introduce harris at the rally and delivered a speech praising her for running the first ever white house office of gun violence prevention one of these issues that I care about is resolving the gun violence issues. Quavo told the crowd, You can't understand the struggle of gun violence if you're not in the field or in the heart of it. Which, you know, the hypocrisy coming from a rapper, which all they do is speak about adultery and gun violence. Which the scriptures say, what, well, according to Hosea 4, you know, robbing, stealing, killing, you know, blood breaking out pretty much all right so you're adding to the violence all right with the with your demonic music this is from inviting me to the white house last year to discuss these solutions to passing the biggest gun safety laws today he continued 
So it's only right in the birthplace of the culture is also the same place to launch the first African American woman to run for president. And that's what this world is about. Oh, people, you know, digging in that ass. <laughs> it's good luck with that cunt. Try and take them. Who's going to do the confiscating? Are they willing to for your unconstitutional order? So, I mean, enough said there. Right? But yeah, man, that was pretty much it. The point was made. Serve Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai. Right? Which, if you look up those names. Right? This is his... The depiction Yeah man so if that shallow one Shalom to the elect, brother.